KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona Electric Vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on primetime, the All Rise application process was met with long lines and the website crashing. Plus, late last night, lawmakers passed the fiscal year 2022 budget bill. And the island records four more COVID-related fatalities, including two that were reclassified from 2020. Half a day and good evening, everyone. It was chaos, a madhouse, infuriating. And those were some of the more polite descriptions heard today about the heavily anticipated All Rise application process. Submissions were finally being accepted at 7 o'clock this morning. Here's more. People began lining up along the roadside leading to Revan Tax in Barragata as early as Tuesday evening. The lines of cars stretched for miles. Our Chris Barnett managed to speak with the first person in line who was waiting for a chance to finally submit his All Rise application. That line last night was pathetic. I, I couldn't survive. And I'm taking care of my disabled wife, you know, and she needs me at home. What's your message to the governor? Huh? I'm sorry, sir. Watch your step, sir. Watch your step, sir. Problem concentrating. Revan Tax had urged filers to apply online, but for a while the system had apparently crashed. One after another, callers to the link complained about not being able to get through, getting frozen out, and worse. Marie Lazama is DRT's deputy director. Like what I can do is I can go and double check, but as far as I know, the system is, is up and running. Okay, so Marie, what you're saying is that there was a PDF of the application that was released by uh, Adeloop and Revintax that was circulating. And yes. People were filling that out and trying to submit that online, but right. if you're filing online, the application is already in uh, the, the website. The application was to go live at 7 this morning. Yeah, okay. I just not... tried going on to myguamtax.com okay, and sorry. I can't even get in. So We yeah, can't even so... get into the website. You can't get into Yeah, website. Sabrina just tried logging in and we can't get in. Okay, let me check. okay, okay, she's going to check that. There was also a link caller who listened to others claim they were seeing other applicants' information when they logged on. Uh, I'm not going to take too long because there's other people that need to get on. I just I just, I'm just afraid for my personal information to be jeopardized. That's why this, this thing is not worth it. In response, Adeloop sent a graphic indicating that by midday, 11,000 had filed online and about 900 had filed by drive through or over the counter. Adeloop has been updating the number of applications filed. As of news time, there were 13,888 online filings, 1,900 drive throughs and 1,400 were filed over the counter. And senators voted last night to override the governor's veto of Senator Jim Moylan's bill amending the RISE Act. It removes the $30 million cap, increases the payments to $1,000 for individuals, and extends the deadline. And that message is no qualified resident who applies in reasonable timeline should be refused the proceeds of the RISE Act. So please... Raise the cap, and let's work together, together, Governor. Reacting this morning on the link, both Democratic Speaker Therese Terlahi and Republican Minority Leader Chris Duenas said the confusion and chaos with the Revan tax filing of RISE applications could be resolved by simply lifting the cap. We could have removed the cap. We could have assured everyone that they would be covered. And why not? Why not cover everyone? That's the part that... Uh, it's, almost, it's just unconscionable to me that we are selecting a few and leaving the others behind because they couldn't get on the internet fast enough. They couldn't line up for 12 hours at night in the middle of the night. I don't understand that at all. I accept this responsibility that the legislature's job is to legislate and the governor's job is to execute. Yes, that's true. But when people are frustrated and can't get anywhere and they get involved in this kind of a mess, where do they go to? They come to the legislature and all we can do is tell them we're trying everything that we can 
And we did that last night, Bree. Senator Moylan acknowledged that despite the override, the governor has made it clear that only she has jurisdiction over the ARP funds. Several other senators, including Republicans Tony Atta and Tello Tidegui and Democrat Senator Sabina Perez, have also weighed in with letters urging the governor to lift the cap. More on that in a moment. The governor has responded to calls from multiple senators to lift the $30 million cap on her All Rise program. Senators, including those I mentioned, uh, T Ada Taidegui and S Sabina Perez wrote to her urging her to lift the cap in light of the apparent confusion and anxiety created by the rush to get applications filed. In her response letter, the governor noted that nearly 14,000 online applications have been filed and there were about 3,300 in-person submissions. The governor also wrote, quote, while I have stood firm in the use of 30 million from the American Rescue Plan, my discretion on this amount takes into account the competing priorities for our entire community over the extended period for which these funds have been given. In other news, Guam has recorded four more casualties in our war against COVID-19 and a record-breaking 206 new positive cases. Last night, the Joint Information Center announced the island's 146th and 147th COVID-related fatalities, which occurred August 28th at GMH. They were an 84-year-old man and a 56-year-old man, respectively. Both had underlying health conditions and were not vaccinated. The JIC also announced the reclassification of two deaths from 2020 as COVID-related. This brings the total number of deaths to 149. And while we wait for the new numbers, along with the 206 new positive cases, there are now 45 hospitalizations, 26 of which are unvaccinated, 17 are vaccinated, and two are unknown. Eight people were receiving ICU level of care as of last night. Our current COVID case count is now 10,000. 559 and the car score is soaring at 43.8 and as the numbers continue to soar the guam national guard was deployed to gmh today to help the hospital hold the line daniel perez reports it hasn't been needed in months but a blue med tent was erected at the guam memorial hospital to handle the overflow of emergency room patients national guard public affairs officer mark scott it's like a field hospital where you can do safe and, and sanitary like medical practices outside of the hospital itself. Uh, part of the thing that makes it sanitary is that there's negative pressure, so air is being filtered out. Uh, there's other things in place that you know are, are barriers to the outdoors that keep it sanitary. According to GMH Administrator Lillian Posadas, the Blue Med Tent is just one of the many measures they've implemented to handle the increase in COVID and non-COVID patients. On Tuesday morning, GMH had a total of 162 patients, 21 of which were COVID-related. Posadas adds that like last year, they've had to reopen their COVID care units and are continuing to ship non-COVID patients as well as staff to the skilled nursing facility in Barragata Heights to make room in the Tumunning Hospital. The tent, according to Scott, is part of the strategy to help GMH handle the load. It's about nine or ten. Of course, with COVID, there's some spacing that's additional to some other practices they might need. But based on what we had last time, because these were erected back last year in October, November, we saw it about nine or ten per ten. If COVID numbers continue to rise, Scott adds that the National Guard will be on standby. So right now, uh, there's one, uh, and as needed, uh, if there's any more available, we're, we're always going to be ready, and we're always going to be there to answer the call and put up more if need be. And just as the Guard answers the call, they're asking the community to do their part. It's important to say, you know, for everyone to please continue to stay safe. Uh, the main idea here is to protect the hospitals from becoming overrun. Uh, we don't want to see what happened last time when there was a surge, right? And some of the staff uh, has been going at it pretty hard for a long time. So please continue to stay safe, protect yourselves and protect each other. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Daniel Perez. Meanwhile, the top business organizations are sounding the alarm over the spike in infections. The GHRA, the Guam Chamber, and the Women's Chamber issued a joint release to all local businesses, strongly urging them to take the necessary precautions recommended by Guam's medical professionals to keep customers and the community safe. They are encouraging businesses to reduce occupancy to 50% and to enforce the now familiar three W's. That's watch your distance with six feet social distancing, wear your mask unless actively eating or drinking, and wash your hands. They also remind businesses to record proper contact tracing documentation and to encourage employees and customers to be vaccinated. 
And while COVID numbers continue to rise, vaccination numbers are declining. They spiked after the executive order last week, but since the new refined EO was released, there's been a slowdown. Army nurse major Roseanne Aperon explains how the Micronesia Mall vaccination clinic is doing. Monday and Tuesday of last week, we saw about 850 and 740 folks. Uh, for Monday and Tuesday of this week, we, see we have numbers of about 580 and 550. This is the best way that we can help to decrease the spread of the, the virus, uh, in addition to our washing hands, wearing our masks, social distancing, and taking our self-precautions. The Micronesia Mall vaccination clinic is open from Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. In other news, the fiscal year 2022 budget bill was passed late last night. It appropriates $637 million from the general fund. That's an increase over the current year's $630 million. It is a spending plan, though, that will cover one of the most volatile times in our recent history. It comes in the middle of a global pandemic that devastated our main tourism industry, but also at a time of unmatched federal funding assistance. Appropriations Chairman Senator Joe San Augustine. Speaker, history was made tonight by tackling another of the most economically challenged budgets in our island history. I'm very pleased with the outcome of this bill, and I look forward to further assisting our island and departments and agencies with additional resources as they become available. The resources he's likely referring to is the several hundred million dollars in American Rescue Plan funding that the governor is holding. She's publicly acknowledged that she will use it to cover operational shortfalls, but has shared little else with senators. A last-minute amendment by Senator Tello Tidegui, though, requires that even if the governor doesn't disclose beforehand where she will spend, she better do so afterward. This would have been very helpful for us, helpful for us before we started the budget, then we would have known what areas that might sh fall short. It doesn't stop us though, Mr. Chair, in the future to reappropriate or unappropriate certain funds to some, some other areas. But we have to know that information first. And we can't be, you know, relying upon KUAM or other radio stations to tell us what that is. We should know firsthand. Budget Director Lester Carlson and Administration Director Edward Byrne must now submit a monthly summary report of ARP spending by the governor within five working days. If not, they'll be fined $250, which will be deposited to the rainy day fund. The governor has 10 days to act on the budget bill. We're going to take a short break and be back with more news right after this. We found out in May of this year that our son had um, a rare medical condition and uh, he could not seek the treatment he needed. Um, our specialist uh, recommended that we travel, or well, the only means of travel was via air ambulance. I can honestly and truly say that Cabo Select Care is really the health care that is always there for us. Gov Guam employees and retirees, enroll now. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Point. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and free load at IT&E, discounts on fuel at Shell, vouchers at Foodies, and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at IT&E, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more. Get more. Hi, my name is Justine Chu. Jim Pamplona. Lexis Sublan. I'm Minami Kramer. And I'm a GTA youth leader. Um, because of GTA, I was able to go to Interlochen, a summer music camp over the summer. And I'm very, very grateful for that opportunity. It helped me pay for my college tuition with a scholarship. Benefits, including a free phone and a year of free service. If you're someone who wants to inspire others, help others, and become a better person, this is for you. Become a GTA youth leader today. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back, everyone. The Education Department is using this week to prepare for the transition from face-to-face -face instruction to online learning. Virtual classes are scheduled to begin a week from today. KUAM's Isaiah Uggen has more. 
The governor's most recent executive order suspending face-to-face -face instruction has the Guam Department of Education busy preparing for the switch to online learning. According to GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez, faculty and staff have been using this past week to prepare for the learning shift. So this week, um, we have, you know, we, we just wanted, we didn't, you know, the switch over from the end of Friday when the executive order uh, was issued to Monday uh, without having a chance to talk to the kids and uh, distribute laptops and all of that. We did want to buy some time to make sure we shifted everybody over and got the laptops ready for distribution. And so this week, uh, that's what we've been doing. Some parents are reporting that a couple of schools informed them that there are no laptops available for their children. But GDOE says there should not be a shortage of laptops. According to GDOE Interim Public Information Officer Michelle Franquez, all 41 public schools have been surveying and contacting parents to pick up their child's online learning equipment since Monday. Fernandez reassured parents that there should not be a shortage of laptops. So there should be there should be laptops available. And again, if there are laptops that are not available, that should be uh, communicated with the central office because we identified laptops of a certain, uh, you know, the laptops that were most recently purchased, right? So there may be available assets at the schools and the schools may just need further guidance to make those available to students. Laptop distribution continues at all 41 GDOE schools through this week and until next week to accommodate applicants. Parents and legal guardians are asked to contact their child's respective schools to apply for a laptop. GDOE noted that students late to their online classes will be accommodated next week due to delayed pickup of devices or access to the community learning centers. Meanwhile, the providing access to home or PATH program is maxed out. However, GDOE officials say that they are in the process of procuring more devices. But parents will have the opportunity to register their children with their respective schools to access the Internet, according to GDOE. Fernandez said that all schools were mandated to find a space to have students use the Internet while schools are shut down. Additionally, students can avail of the Internet service at GDOE's 21 community learning centers as they remain open. For more information, contact your child's respective schools, call 311-DIAL option 8 or email info at gdoe.net. Reporting for Guam Zoo's network, Guahu C. Isaiah Uggen. The Guam Department of Education will be hosting a community and parent input session geared towards families with special needs children this Saturday. The virtual session on September 4th is meant to provide parents with a better understanding of their child's education transition. There's still no official word on how students with special needs will be attending class classes now that face-to-face -face instruction has been suspended until further notice. Speaking on the link, GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez says the session will help answer parents' questions about the shift in learning. The virtual meeting will be held via Zoom at 9 a.m. It will also be live streamed on GDOE's Facebook page. Meanwhile, Dodea schools will stay open and classes are still in session. Joint Region Marianas announced that based on the current COVID-19 transmission rate within the DOD community, JRM installations will remain in health protection condition B. JRM says it continues to monitor the situation closely with its partners, including GovGuam and the U.S. Naval Hospital, and will continually assess whether in-person instruction remains in the best interests of all involved. And the U.S. Justice Department has filed a civil complaint against the government of Guam and the GovGuam Retirement Fund on behalf of several employees who served in the National Guard. The feds claim GovGuam violated the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act of 1994, also known as USERA. Four firefighters and a GDOE employee are the plaintiffs. They allege that while on active duty status, they were not credited service towards retirement while using donated leave as part of the government's leave sharing program. The employees allege they suffered reduced pension annuities, which will impact them for the rest of their lives. The feds are asking the court to order GovGuam to comply with you, Sarah, and retroactively make contributions, including all makeup contributions, on behalf of employees and retirees who use donated leave while serving in the military. And a couple admitted to use, using the drug ICE was arrested for child abuse. Police arrested 27-year-old Jathan John Lizama San Nicolas following a witness report that he was allegedly abusing a two- and four-year-old. The witness told police that they noticed a bruise on one of the victim's legs. The child said it was from Lizama. The other child, who had a cracked lip, 
also alleged Lizama had slapped his mouth. According to court documents, he admitted that he would curse and shout at the children to frighten them and that not all the bruises were from him. Also arrested was 28-year-old Daisy Luana Mendiola. She claims she didn't know how the children got the injuries and didn't have knowledge about them. And a federal indictment was handed down today against Vicente Guerrero Perez. He's accused of robbing the first Hawaiian bank in Harmon on Friday the 13th back in August. He did this by handing a note to a teller. He walked out with more than $1,500 and was picked up days later at the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. Perez was also indicted on charges related to failing to update as a sex offender. His arraignment hearing is scheduled for Thursday. And a former Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center psychiatrist wanted by local authorities was arrested earlier this week in Alaska. Dr. Abner Pasatiempo is accused of harassing seven of his patients during their therapy sessions between 2018 and 2019. He failed to appear at his court hearings earlier this year, prompting a Superior Court of Guam judge to issue a warrant of arrest. The Guam Attorney General's office worked with Alaska's Attorney General and state law enforcement authorities to locate Pasatiempo. An Alaskan Superior Court judge ordered him not to leave the state, released him on a $2,000 bail bond, and set a status hearing for September 30th. The Guam Office of the Attorney General is working with Alaskan authorities to determine how the case will proceed. And Mangila Solar Farm contractor Samsung ENC America has filed a notice of intent to appeal its notice of violation and is also requesting a hearing that's according to the Guam EPA website. The company was issued an NOV on July 29th after it failed to follow its approved sediment and erosion control plan. As a result, heavy rains caused flooding and stormwater runoff into adjacent properties. This includes local favorite swimming spot Marble Caves. The once pristine site was turned into a virtual mud pit. Two lawsuits have also been filed stemming from the environmental damage and representatives from the U.S. EPA were recently on island to conduct an inspection. A report on their findings has not been released. Dave Delgado is up next with sports. Don't go anywhere. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. KUAM News, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out for this powerful symbol for visitors, island residents, and industry workers alike, as it represents establishments with a consistent global commitment to safety practices. Stamped with approval by the Guam Visitors Bureau and the World Travel Tourism Council. Every Monday on KUAM News, we'll feature a different local business who's taken the Safe Guam and Safe Travels pledge to maintain health and safety standards to get Guam back on track. Log on to visitguam.com to see how your business can receive the designation, what businesses in our community are Guam Safe certified, and have the WTTC Safe Travel certified. From the minds that brought you Taco Bell's Fry Force comes another mouth-watering adventure. Packed with seasoned beef, drizzled with spicy ranch, and covered with your favorite toppings. It's the new Loaded Taco Fries, now serving at a Taco Bell near you. Say hello to the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Got a question about your finances? You've come to the right place. Bring all your accounts together, even those that aren't with us, and see the big picture, right down to the smallest detail. Unlock powerful tools like Insights and Money Map that help you save time and take control of your finances. When you connect accounts with the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. Count on me for life. She's still good life creating those better days. Through each and every faith, keep your roots in the ground.
don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace. And I'll be around. Whoa, whoa. You can count on me. You can count on me for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can count on me. You can count on me for life. Whoa, whoa. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Guamali Basketball for the Guam Village Basketball League is happy to receive money from the Governor's Youth and Education Programs. The $229,296 will help promote the sport of basketball throughout the island. The goal is to bring the sport to every village, beginning at the grassroots level. We're real grateful that the, uh, this uh, administration has uh, faith in Guamalee basketball to provide uh, sports for the kids. And, you know, through this educational uh, funding grant, we were able to secure a, a, a youth tournament for all the villages. So village uh, island-wide basketball league. Uh, we'll be able to provide uniforms, uh, free of cost, basketballs free of cost for all the participants, uh, stipends for coaches, and the league will run up for about 10 months, so entrance fee is paid for all the kids. So um, we'll be, you know, reaching out to the mayor's offices, trying to organize uh, all the villages to be able to participate in our program. Guam Elite will be establishing an online educational program for kids and coaches. The coaches and staff will also be going out to the villages to run camps and clinics, making the game fun, educational, and getting our youth healthy at the same time. With the success of the men's national team, we're really trying to push towards that and really start with the younger kids, developing the younger kids, getting them, getting them into you know, the game of basketball, uh, growing the sport, especially at the elementary school age level. So growing a game of basketball, letting them enjoy it, learning the basic rules and starting from there. And hopefully when they get into middle school, they already have a strong foundation of uh, the game of basketball. Also receiving funds is the Menhoben Swim Club for the Menhoben Scholar Athletes After School Sports and Homework Assistance Program. $65,000 was given to the organization to help with their sporting activities. It's going to be used for all the Guam Swimming Federation swim teams and we'll use the money to rent training facilities, education facilities, and then also to get tutors for our swimmers and our students. Flores is also part of the pool task force and says the administration has been helping the federation solve their pool needs. I'm so happy that the governor and lieutenant governor are giving us really solid support to try to fix the problems that we've had in the past. They're trying to get, a, get the Dado pool repaired. They're relooking, fixing the Aganya pool, and they're trying to help us find the opportunity for a new Olympic-sized swimming pool. But we really, really appreciate the support for our swimmers from the governor and lieutenant governor. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Building on the past, we at Docomo Pacific Business believe in helping businesses move forward and together, changing the way we get things done to make you and your company reach your highest potential. Trust in our commitment to bring you the best solutions for all your business goals. We are Docomo Pacific Business. Let's work better together. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience.
New crispy almond chicken breast for a limited time only at Panda Express. And before we close out the news, uh, news tonight, here's Jason with our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Zone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday on the first day of September. Specifically, happy birthday number 13 to Sophia. She's a huge BTS fan and we wish you all the best and we love you always, say mommy, daddy, and the family. Happy birthday number five to precious Valerie. Love from Nana, mommy, your brother, your sisters, your father, and the entire family near and far. It is a happy third birthday to Joel Alexander Sablan Rolden, to the best boy in the whole world. We love you always. Say your daddy, your mommy, and your entire family. Maria St. Nicholas, happy birthday to our mom, Maria. We love you and your adoring family. Says we hope you have a good birthday. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, happy birthday number 42 to Jennifer Sanchez. This is going out to you from your familia. Happy birthday each and every one of you. Please stay safe and have a great day. And that's our report for tonight. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great evening. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. Hop day, everyone. Esther Lecanto here. Welcome to another edition of In Full Zoom. And this week, we're going to talk a little bit about the U.S. Department